All right, we'll get started. It's three o'clock. Uh, this is our regular monthly meeting. Before we get started, are there any conflicts of interest that need to be declared by any of the commissioners today? None. I have none. No. Uh, item number two is to approve the consent agenda, approve the minutes, and ratify the payment of bills. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as proposed. I'll second. Motion by Anthony, second by Don. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item three is to approve the financial statements. So I can give a little bit of update here. <clears throat> um, I'll go through a little bit of the electric division, a little bit more uh, in depth than some of the areas. Um, I know we've touched on some things in the past and some of the months we've added some notes in there talking about a few areas and some I think minutes or some meetings we didn't have things in the notes but we talked about them so I kind of went back and just did a little bit of recap of a couple different things. Um, Jared and I have been kind of monitoring this stuff over the last few months a lot of these different areas. Um, on the salary side of things um, we're trending higher than we typically do. One of the things that we're noticing was we're just not capitalizing as much labor as we typically do in years. So if we don't have a lot of capital items that we're capitalizing or work orders that are major capital projects, but more maintenance, we're not you know, rolling that into capital items and rolling that onto the balance sheet. It's just being expensed. So we've been seeing that trend consistently uh, over the summer. Uh, <clears throat> part of it's just playing catch up with maintenance. Um, you know, We were basically locked down for 2020 with COVID and so you know, a lot of the guys in the distribution transmission areas you know, were having to play catch up and keep our maintenance updated. So a lot more of the work that's being done is more just operational maintenance and upkeep versus real major capital items going on. So I would anticipate us still seeing some of that into next year as well um, with some of that. So that's kind of the big gist. We're still running under budget, um, but I think we're going to be closer to that. Um, you know, where we budgeted it in the year versus being several hundred thousand dollars under that because um, we're just not going to capitalize as much labor from what Jared and I are seeing with a lot of the projects that we have listed or things that are coming up for the remainder of the year. Purchase power is down obviously a little bit. Um, that will fluctuate. Obviously you can see our year to date sales are down on uh, the electric division almost four percent. This uh, September over September we're down um, particularly in the industrial division industrial class uh, we're down 11 percent year over year september over september the big reason for that is 3m was shut down two full days over labor day weekend um, and so that accounts for about 70 percent of the reduction in kilowatt hours billed in september you'll also see that in the gas division as well since they were shut down completely uh, they were essentially black so they didn't have any of their boiler systems and a lot of that stuff running as well so um, so that's the big reason for september's um, significant reduction in that industrial class. Otherwise, most of them are trending fairly uh, consistent or at least you know, where we thought they would be through this year, um, just a hair uh, under last year, but right around where I predicted the budget to be. So nothing really earth shattering or surprising there as far as usage. Um, on the generator fuel side of things, obviously our fuel costs are up um, significantly. Of course, a lot of that is offset by the sales for resales. We've got more market sales this year. Obviously, we got into the Dynasty uh, power contract here as well. So we've got several months of increased sales, full sales on that side. Well, there's a couple of factors on the generating side of things. So on the hedging program, when we generate for our hedging program to, to kind of shave off the high market prices, that is becoming uh, somewhat more costly. Obviously, natural gas prices are, are moving upward and have been, and, and we anticipate that long term. We do get a little bit of benefit this year because we still had some contracted gas at cheaper rates. I think we were in the 250, $2.50 cent range. Um, so we did see some additional margins that I don't anticipate us seeing moving forward in the next couple years. We did lock up some natural gas uh, for the next two years for the summer months and that's at about $4.66 uh, for our hedging program. So you can see we're almost double uh, what the gas prices were a couple years ago and that's a continual trend that's gonna happen. Um, you know, we're seeing stuff bouncing around between, you know, low fours up to 10, 11, 12. Um, so we said, you know, if, if we can lock in at the 466 and keep our overall power supply cost at basically where our average marginal price is right now or cost, we should do that versus taking the risk that's going to go down. There's way more upside risk of it going higher than there is lower. And so we locked up um, some for next year for the 2023 budget you'll see we've got some locked up at that price for a certain amount of hours to hedge down 
you know, any significant spikes that we're going to see in the market next year, which I anticipate uh, we'll see some of those. So you do see some increased fuel costs uh, because of that. The other piece that we touched on earlier in the year, um, back in March and April and May, we ran some of our units, um, particularly on the generation side of things, the production side. We did all of our RADA testing this year, all of our emissions permitting testing needed to be done uh, in March and April. So we had about $43,000 worth of fuel costs. Um, and that we incurred with higher gas prices that, out, that we were buying off the spot market to do the emissions testing. Those are things that aren't every year, but obviously we got caught this year with the testing that needed to be done and then obviously the inflated gas pricing that we're starting to see uh, become more of the norm. And then we touched a little bit about some of the pigging that was done that the gas division was going to pick up, but we had some increased gas costs there as well um, to use that. So we just had some, some things in that area that we don't typically have every year, but you're going to we cut some of those this year, uh, which is our permitting and, and some of the things we need to do to run generation in town. And then on the operating expense side of things, that's significantly up this year. We, I've touched on, we've touched on a few of them in the notes. Um, some of the things, just to kind of refresh your guys' mind, we have, we've been um, repairing some of our substations. So we've had three substation repairs this year, some LTC repairs um, that usually are one, one every 10 years. We're having to replace and do some things there. That was about 100 grand um, to, to repair some of those substations in town. Um, we've had increased CIP rebates of about 14,000. So that's in the operating expense area as well. We've pulled more uh, equipment, materials out of inventory for Unit 1 uh, this year that we typically don't. And we've also tried troubleshooting Unit 1 on those oil repairs recently, and that was about 53 grand um, there. And obviously that didn't solve the issue, which is why it's coming out of service and we're taking it in. Um, at the beginning of the year, we paid our MMUA dues. We typically pay those in quarterly increments, but we paid it all at the beginning of the year, so that was a $28,000 expense. We typically see the first quarter, eight, you know, they're chunked in quarters, so um, that will play, that will even itself up at the end of the year. We had the elevator repairs. We got about fifty-three to fifty-four thousand the elevator repairs to get that back into compliance with state codes, and that's a, a repair that once that's done, that that'll be a long-term fix. We won't have those types of costs coming up. Uh, we also had in March thirty thousand dollars in uh, nozzle cleanings, inspections, repairs. Um, we've had, um, we talked about the state testing, the RADA testing. Um, not only did we have the increased fuel costs, but in order to do that testing, we incurred about $40,000 worth of HDR consulting and some of the outside services to come in to do the RADA testing for us uh, to be in compliance with our permits. So those are going to be cyclical uh, based on when our permits are issued and when we have to renew those. So we had those costs as well this year, and then we have, and we're just, and we're just seeing in general inventory costs. You know, we're pulling more inventory out of uh, more costs out of inventory for just our normal distribution, transmission, uh, updates, maintenance, um, uh, repairs. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about, you know, the cost of transformers are going up, the cost of conductors going up. Not only are we having significant lead times, but the costs are doubling, tripling. In place and so as we're doing more repairs and more maintenance we're pulling more out of inventory um, some of the stuff we did early on uh, in the year was cheaper inventory that was coming out but now you're starting to see on the back end more expensive inventory having to be pulled out so the more maintenance and the more we're pulling out um, inventory the more operating costs you're going to see because they all roll into those operating expense areas so i anticipate that going to be more of the norm that you're going to see more in the, in the operating expense area. We're just going to have higher operating costs related to materials, equipment, you know, lead times, things of that nature. Um, we've talked internally about fleet, fleets, you know, long lead times on fleet, increased pricing on fleet, those types of things. So nothing that you guys are, aren't aware of in your own businesses and what you're seeing, but those are going to be things that you're going to see in the 2023 budget. When we start rolling that out, you're going to see increased operating costs. Uh, just for general maintenance and materials and repairs and things of that nature. Hopefully a lot of these repairs, we don't have a lot of these all in the same year that you know they, they kind of get staggered, but if something fails, obviously we got to make sure that we're fixing those things timely to keep our reliability uh, intact. And so a lot of those, you know, 30,000 here, 50,000 here, 20,000 there, and you have multiple of those, you know, month after month where you're keeping the system updated and maintained, you know, it starts to add up.
you know, to a half a million dollars of increased operating costs that we haven't typically seen probably since I've been here where we're having that much. And then obviously the price escalation and a lot of the stuff is compounding the problem um, with that stuff. But Can we go back to your comments on the hedging? When we're, so I'm looking at the generator fuel chemical that year to date is a million, million fifty over last year and about double what we budgeted. Um, so if we're, if we're selling, if we're hedging, we're not, are we picking up fuel cost adjustment that adds to the revenues then or not? So when we're hedging. The hedging portion of the revenues. Right, so when you're hedging, you're not gonna see revenue on that side? It's just an off, it's a non-incurred expense. Right? Correct, you're gonna see the increased cost of the fuel costs and the, and the labor and the maintenance costs that go into the hedging program, but what you, you won't see it in the sales for resales, but what you should see is a reduction in the power cost adjustment because that hedging blends our overall power supply costs down for the month. So you'll see, or should see, if, if we're hedging probably when we're taking the high peaks off of the market purchases, our overall co power cost expenses for the month should be lower, which then will trickle into a reduction of the power cost adjustment, which would typically be higher. Now the piece that we have that we're running into is the retail rates aren't covering those costs anymore, so the power cost adjustments are gonna start becoming higher just inadvertently, whether we're buying it off the market or generating, because our cost to generate is becoming more expensive with the fuel. And so you're seeing the market prices move linear with fuel prices, right? So as the cost of natural gas goes up, so does the market prices. And so okay. what we've been able to do is shave the peak off. So when I show you guys some of the internal modeling, you know the business internal models that we do with our generation, you'll see that we're, Having generation is saving us more. It saved us more in 2021, in 2022, than in some previous years because we've been able to shave off high, the higher, the pricing of the market is a lot higher. Those peaks and what they have been, you know, we're getting into eighty, eighty dollar, two hundred dollar, hundred dollar, you know, fairly regularly where we're able to generate and keep that down. But if you're using four dollar gas or five dollar gas, you know, it's still costing you enough that doesn't blend down um, your base load. Price. See, we were in that situation when we had $2 gas, we were able to either generate cheaper than the market, and the market prices were lower as well, so we were able to take those costs and blend down our wholesale costs of $50, so we were somewhere down in that 48 But now with the increased cost of fuel and it costs us more to generate, you're not only seeing the higher market prices, but you're also seeing it's a higher cost for us to generate because of the fuel that we're having less of ability to blend down the baseload contract price now because that's all becoming around $50 a megawatt. So you'll see I budgeted 1.2 million power cost adjustment for this year. We're already there through September, so I anticipate us probably being at about a million and a half this year. And I'm budgeting a million and a half at least for 2023 in PCA. And Jared will touch on a few things moving forward, but that may not be enough either depend on, depending on how much you know, of intermittent resources are in the market. So that's where you've seen those big spikes, particularly in the Meisner market, is there's a lot of wind generation going on and, and there's and the load isn't astronomical, the prices will stay fairly favorable in the market, but as soon as the wind dies down and all the dispatchable load that's in play, whether it's nuclear, um, natural gas or coal already dispatched, you see prices significantly spike. So at that point we have to make a decision. If we don't have contracted gas, can we still you know generate cheaper and bring our overall power supply cost down for the month, or do we you know, have to buy off the market? Now, obviously, when we have units out, like what we're talking about with unit one, and if we have things that are down, then we're even at more risk of the spikes in the market that we have no alternative but to buy it off the market. So we're trying to play that game where we're trying to chop the peaks off, um, but yet understand that gas prices are just becoming higher, and they're gonna be consistently higher, so. Even in the future, they're just gonna yeah, I mean, the, the forecasting out 2023, some of the slips on 2023 um, are more expensive than 24, 25, so you can get some of that stuff a little bit better price in 24, 25, but the consistent thing I'm hearing, um, and John can probably talk about years quite a bit from BP2, is that's those are normal prices. Three, four dollar gas is gonna be on the cheap side for the foreseeable future, so that's the market that we're playing in right now. I think that's 
what you're hearing from wholesale suppliers, and Jerry can touch a little bit on that. You just got back from the MRAS meeting, but I'm seeing that on the wholesale side, I'm seeing that on the market side. I'm hearing it from all the different uh, energy markets around the country. Um, a couple things going on. One, the permitting is, has slowed down. They're not being able, they're not able to get enough intermittent resources, renewables into the market fast enough to curtail that because the permitting process takes so long. It's going to take two, three, four years for them to even get permitted and even start some of the projects. Some of the projects have been hampered. They also still have constraints on natural gas pipelines, so that's going to have a constraint if there's a lot of demand for natural gas. That's going to, you know, we're going to have the polar vortex all over again in certain areas. Um, so they're trying to work through those things. Obviously, the permitting is an issue. If you're not going to permit new piping, how do you get more capacity to flow more gas uh, to dispatchable generation if more of that's moving towards natural gas? So you've got a lot of these things kind of working in concert that obviously are putting upward pressure on the commodities on the market, also on the fuel, uh, whether that's propane, whether that's fuel oil, whether that's natural gas. Um, and they haven't made any real political decisions to, to do more uh, drilling domestically. Um, and the other piece that's really becoming the big, a big factor too is it's a global market now. And so we've been talking about these things in some of these meetings about do you put emergency alerts in place where you quit offshore, you know, sh shipping LNG and stuff offshore when we run into issues here where you, you basically say you can't, we're, we're declaring an emergency and it has to stay domestically. But a lot of these factors are playing into the market pricing and the volatility and the unforeseen um, really where the market's going and that's what's creating a lot of this stuff, so. So as I listen to that, think about it, translate it to the profit and loss statement, what I think I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm not seeing this correctly, but that every, everything's going up in price, but our power cost adjustment, our fuel cost adjustment isn't keeping up with it, which is going to put upward pressure in prices when we look at our rate setting. So Correct. Is that, the, is that the executive summary of yep. kind of what you're seeing going on in the P&L? Yep. You know, we're still, I looked at through this, through September, our power cost adjustment's still at about six-tenths of a penny added on to the retail rate. So that's going to become the signal part. But if we start getting into, you know, if we're adding, you know, Jerry will talk about in a minute, you know, wholesale costs are looking to go up. If we start adding another million dollars, another $2 million, pretty soon that power cost adjustment becomes two, two and a half million dollars of your of your retail rate. You know, and remember, the, the last time when the cost of service said, he said, you know, they said, if you start getting to a penny, we're having to charge an additional penny per kilowatt hour. You need to then change your retail rate to reflect that, so you're not using the power cost adjustment as the way to uh, capture that. What do you have, remind me? When's our next rate study? So they're going through it now, and Jared's working with the consultants on that. I'm hopefully we'll have something in the next couple of weeks to list preliminary information to look at, so we can see how that stuff is shaping up. I am going to get him a new uh, revised five-year budget forecast with some of the stuff you learned from MR yesterday, so they can see really. You know, where our power supply costs are going to be at least, for, at least forecast and then what we're looking for forecasted capex pretty timely rate study mm -hmm. yeah. so and then some of the things that don't lend into the power supply costs are the operating expenses like you know the transmission materials and conductor line none of that stuff rolls in the power cost yeah. expenses for the month so and those are all going up significantly and so you can't use the power cost adjustment to cover those costs. It has to be done by the retail rates. Okay. So that's what we're seeing, right? The two components, so. You mentioned the, the pigging project. Did we ever file results on that? Uh, yes. But good. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can talk about it later. I'm okay. not to inter interfere with this. And then on the gas side, just gas is trending as we typically have seen. And I don't like looking at the 2021 because 2021 was the polar vortex and that kind of threw us out of flux. But typically around this time of the year, on the gas side, we're typically seeing um, the year-to-day financials that you're typically seeing. We're in that million to million and a half dollar range. So that's trending pretty well. I'm on there. Um, and again, we have a lot of our gas contract and John had locked up a lot of that you know, for significant amounts of time. So that limits some of the volatility of having to buy large quantities of gas unless we get into, again, real cold, extreme weather where we're just blowing through all of our contracted gas, but then that becomes more of a consumption issue than it does that we 
you know, Tim Lock could price him, so he's done a good job on that side. So, so we're trending good on that side, and, and overall, you know, we're keeping up in some of the targets, but obviously there's kind of an imbalance between the two that you guys are aware of. So. <coughs> Any other questions on the financials? I do one quick thing to mention. I was short on my estimate for GRE for the transmission that came back forty thousand higher, so it'd be like a ten thousand dollar loss instead of a thirty thousand profit for something to factor that in. And kind of to piggyback on Anthony's question, where you will see when we're hedging more, you'll see purchase power be down because you'll see we uh, the cost was more per megawatt hour. But we just purchased a lot less, so purchase power in general is down, even with the higher costs. So that's one spot you'll see. Yeah. And that's all I had to mention. All right. Thank you both. Item number four is open forum. Oh, I'm sorry. We need a motion to approve the financial statements. I'll make a motion to approve the financial statements. Motion by Don, second by Anthony. So all in favor, signify <laughs> by saying aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? The motion is approved. Item four is the open forum. We don't have anybody here today. Item five is communication. City administrator. Yeah. I don't have anything for you guys. So collections in less than two weeks. So All right. Item five B is divisions. Dan, you got anything today? The uh, AV charger, electric vehicle charger, showed up last week. They ordered. Um, we're working on the installation now. Hopefully, we'll get that installed yet this year, and get the second one up and running. So. Where's that going, Dave? It's going in the northwest corner of the uh, arena in the rec center parking lot. And we worked with the city and came up with the best location we could find that that was our second spot so that's, that's the plan uh -huh. um, so rfp for unit one is out um with vendors right now we're reviewing that um next week we have um, caterpillar from germany on site to do some warranty work on unit six and then uh, two two people from ziggler cat will be on site to help them with that as well and then the week after that, they're going to be doing the oil consumption test. That was the last thing on the contract. Yeah. So we had to get enough hours on it before we could perform that test. So we still have the retainer on there. Seven thousand. Unit six been running, run well for you, Mike. Unit six. Yeah. Uh, we've had a few issues. Um, the, the warranty issue is a condensate leak, so it's just. When it's real humid all week, it kind of say leaking out on the spot. So um, they've been running okay. We've had some growing pains, but we're getting through it. I was going to say nothing, but I will. I will address the mic. Sorry, I messed you up. You couldn't get out of the time. Yeah, I, I've been trying to find somebody that can brag about this. Too. Um, <laughs> just received the final reports back from TD Williamson, who did the picking um, last Friday. Um, <laughs> basically, in a nutshell, what it says is the pipeline from out in the the side valve in is just a little under a mile long, 5,120 feet. Uh, there no, no dents or deformations were found at all from point A to point B. No metal losses, internal or external, were found. Uh, no uh, coating loss, no nothing. I mean, it's the comment I got back from the gentleman at T.D. Williamson out in Utah was, it's the cleanest pipeline that they've seen in years. And I said, well, it's not that old. He said, well, we've seen worse pipelines that are brand new. So it was really good. I was fantastic. I was glad to hear it. Uh, 
I was really impressed with the way the MagFlux tool operates. It actually, I mean, it can tell you where all the bends are. I mean, it's just fantastic. But it can, not only can it tell you losses, it can tell me where I have a cad well on the pipe, where there's additional metal on the outside of the pipe. So where we cross Highway 22 on the outside, on the outlet side of the pipe, so on the west side of the pipe, we have a cathodic protection test station. So we have wires cad welded to the pipe so that we can read the cathodic protection levels on the pipe. Well, the tool can actually read the fact that there's weld metal on the outside of that pipe. And it's like, wow, I'm, I'm impressed. So no, it, long story short, it was a fantastic run. Um, no integrity issues whatsoever, but we do have to, as part of the program, we have to identify three locations on the pipe. We have now we have to dig it up in three spots, even though we have no bad spots. Um, that's just what the, the code requires. So we're going to pick. I have a, a call on Friday to pick the locations. One spot we're going to pick will be out on the east side of Highway 22 between the side valve and 22 because when the pig took off from the launcher it would speed up and then stop and speed up and stop and speed up and stop. You can actually see that velocity on the velocity runs. So our question back to T.D. Williamson, well when the pig was starting and stopping are we still getting accurate data? And they said, yes you are. Now we're going to put one of our spots is going to be where it was speeding up and slowing down, so we can prove that, <coughs> that data is correct. And then the other two spots, I'll have to find out Friday what we're going to pick. But we have to, within six months of getting the results, I have to dig in three locations and have a qualified corrosion inspector come out and inspect the coating and charges a lot of money and. Get that finished up. <laughs> it's part of our it's part of our bid with WSB. They're providing a, a corrosion inspect a mace qual certified inspector. So I'd like to get it done yet this year. I don't want to be out there next March digging through mm -hmm. three four feet of frost. So we're going to try to get it done yet in November or December. So wasn't there some issues with the pigging at the beginning, and they thought there might be issues with the pipe and. The, the first the first run um, the mag flux tool um, went about a thousand feet and then stopped reading for I, for I forget the area of the pipe but it stopped reading in that swath and of course TD Williamson wasn't going to assume any responsibility that they blamed it on uh, possible junk in the pipe there's no junk in the pipe um, so they did they took the tool back inspected it and they won't say it out loud but it was some bad connect bad electrical connections that kept moisture out of the pipe and failed and we're trying to get them to write that and put that in writing but not having much luck yet okay. but no everything's fantastic good and just as a final note when we did pick it we did get some norm dust out it's a red real fine red dust in the old days it was called pipeline rouge now it's called norm and it's normally occurring radioactive material uh, so we captured all of that uh, sprayed it down with water so that it didn't get into the atmosphere we've been working with several labs uh, we've had it tested uh, it's, it's lower it's low enough in radioactivity we can dispose of it in the Bonco site uh, up north um, first we had to, we had 255 gallon drums full of stuff mixed with water. The Bonco site won't take liquids, so then we had to get a pallet of floor dry. Uh, now I've got over 2,000 pounds of floor dry with this stuff mixed in it. Um, and we're, we had it tested for moisture at Pace Labs. Pace Labs said, yeah, now you're good. Now we can call it up to Bonco and dispose of it. So. Long story short, everything went well. Okay. Good to hear. I, you're sorry, you even asked me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> Things that you learn every day, right? Yeah. As Jeremy mentioned that was at Missouri River's meeting this morning, and Alexander just got back. A couple things on their financials. Next year, we're going to time of use rates. They did not want to re increase that. 
we'll actually see about a 2.1% decrease. It looks like we'll be up a little bit in the winter and summer months, but then down even more far than that in the spring and fall. And it was very minimal, the difference in summer and winter and anyway. Uh, then starting 2024, they're probably projecting like a 2.7% increase for the next four years. So 24 through 27, just with higher energy costs, gas prices, everything, which is different than what was projected about a year ago. But obviously things have changed. Uh, they, did, they are seeing a lot of wholesalers going for big increases next year. Their, whole, their plan was obviously not at the time of use, but then also wanted to smooth it out. So they're expecting those wholesalers to probably just have a 10% and maybe nothing. So their goal is the smaller percentages for a couple of years. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Financially, they did save 800000 a year in the bond. So you just refinanced. Those costs will help. And generation and Transmission side, they are starting a transmission project. Well, hoping to be, but they should get it. From the big stone power plant to Alexandria. It'll cost $450 million. That obviously, transmission projects, you pretty much get your money back eventually. So that's, their goal is to be have no transmission costs, but they're way behind. So that, that'll help get them a little closer. I think they'll own 60%. And then generation, they're in need of generation for uh, capacity mostly. So they're going to be sending out letters possibly to have municipals to add generation in the way of the capacity. So something we'll probably look into since we'll have more room in our power plants now. And that's it. I just skipped Joni's part on the energy racks because it was getting a little too late. All right, uh, item 5C, human resources. Angie, do you have anything today? 5D is legal. Not right. today. 5D is general manager. Just starting legislative meetings. Obviously, that stuff's starting to wrap up with the elections coming. So both at the federal and state level, been on a lot of calls there, and we're starting to have our consistent weekly calls. They're finishing up the wholesale, internal wholesale modeling, so I'll probably get that out to you in the next, probably next week sometime. Just waiting a few uh, pieces of information. Finish that up, and so I'll get that out to you guys and kind of see how 2021 um, kind of played out. And then Dan's going to update some information for me for September and October, so I'll get the most current year to date stuff in as far as how the hedging program is helping kind of shave off the market peaks. For us, so I'll finalize that and then just continue working on budgets and CIP stuff. Obviously, it's the temp here, so. so it's kind of where I'm at right now. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Item 6A policy is a lot to review. Um, and item 6B, it looks like there's a couple of changes we need to approve. Is this you, Jeremy? Yep. Um, so this stems back to that tenant can't disconnect type thing. So we just put at the request of the property owner as long as it's currently in the owner's name was there before and now we're just gonna add and no tenant occupies property. And on the following page, reasons to not disconnect, tenant pays current month on account in the landlord's name. So reasons to not disconnect. And that's just on both the commercial and the residential. So that's the changes. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Anybody care to make a motion for these changes? Uh, motion to approve the changes to this connection of residential and commercial services policies. Second. Motion by Anthony, second by Don. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> uh, M7, unfinished business. Doesn't look like there's any. Item 8, a new business is to approve the rollover of Northern Natural Gas Transportation Contract, number 21-279. Uh, 
you gentlemen, I'm sure you remember, we maintained two contracts on the Northern Natural Gas. Uh, 21279 is the, old, is the number that was the town used to use, and then 102733 is the contract that Generation had. Uh, we still hold both contracts, although we've lowered their capacity levels to minimum. Uh, we hold 100 decatherms a day on this contract. On the generation contract, we hold 50 decatherms a day, so we, we lower them almost as low as we can go. Uh, in relation, I mean, this is 100 decatherms a day. Right now, we're using between six and 10,000 decatherms of gas, so this is, you know, nothing. Uh, it costs us about $14,000 a year to maintain this. Uh, the only reason we keep it is in case we have a catastrophic failure on our, our pipeline uh, and we have to shut it in. We can then work with Northern Natural Gas and try to get gas flowing on their system to keep the town going. So it's, it's a backup supply. Risk mitigation. Sense to me. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that? <coughs> um, I'll make a motion to approve the rollover of Northern Natural Gas Transportation Contract. Number 21279. I'll second. Motion by Don, second by Anthony. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion's approved. Item 8B is to approve the 2022 audit services with CDS. So this will be a first time having to do this. Otherwise, they've been below Jeremy's threshold. So this is just their fees for next year. Above. You can see a copy of the email, It'll be about a four and a half percent increase. And I just put a history of what we've paid in the past 10 years. All right. I make a motion to approve the 2022 20, audit services with Conway kind of with the Chase. I will second the motion. Motion by Anthony, second by Don. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion 8B is approved as well. Uh, 8C is to approve Digger Derrick repair. Yeah, the uh, winch assembly failed on, the, on our Digger Derrick. Um, it wasn't repairable, so it needed to be fully replaced. Um, this truck is also the one that's going to be on the 2023 budget for replacement. However, we've talked about this with many times, we probably wouldn't see a new truck until probably 24 or 25. So, either way, we still have to replace this to uh, have it operational. And even for resale. So, Alltech um, Services, it's an Alltech truck, Alltech Services is doing repair. And so, I just need the approval for the total of $26,000 for the repair. All right. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the Digger Derrick repair. I'll second. Motion by Don, second by Anthony. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item 8C is approved. Item 8D is to approve requisition 009358, design of HCP Interconnect. Gentlemen have been working with Heartland Corn Products. Uh, they are out securing easements uh, as we speak to transport natural gas to build their own pipeline from us to, to their plant. Um, we have the location of the Interconnect station kind of pinned down. It's still still moving around a little bit, but we're close enough to know where it's going to be. Uh, like as I said, they're, they're securing easements. I just spoke with Gary yesterday uh, about some issues that they're running into. Uh, but since everybody knows deliveries are, are crazy nowadays, trying to find materials or get materials is terrible. Uh, so I'd like to start on the design of the Interconnect station sooner rather than later um, so that we can be assured of being able to start the station by October 1 of next year. I, I think it's going to be really tight. It's going to be tough. Um, but uh, I've been working with WSB. They do a fantastic job working with me. Um, for the design of the station. Uh, they'll be doing the, it's listed on here, the, the uh, pipeline engineering and design, uh, mechanical and <laughs> electrical engineering, the civil surveying, structural and permitting, civil and roadway design, and environmental compliance, which is fun. Uh, natural resource desktop review. Uh, we have to do that because we're in close proximity of a river. Um, 
um, so we have to do an environmental review, um, geotechnical, and they will be doing the construction inspection. Uh, you have to have a qualified inspector to inspect all of your welds since it's 11, it runs at 1100, heading up to 1100 pounds. So a dummy like me can't just go down and look at the welds and say, yeah, they look good. You have to have a qualified, plus I'll all have to be x-rayed. But um, they gave me a, a not to exceed price of $269,248.60. Uh, the original price was about 60,000 higher. I knocked about 60,000 off. Hopefully I'll be able to do that work uh, by the time. Uh, but WSB's done a lot of work for us in the past, and they're, they're quality people to work with. The one question I know you're probably going to ask is how do we know the project's going to go through? You know, if we spend, if we submit, or if we uh, sign on to spending $269,000 and part of the corn stops construction, you know, what do we do? That's, that's Jeremy and I discussed that today. Um, Hartman Corn has agreed to provide us a, a letter covered, stating that they'll cover all of our expenses if the project goes through. I think I, I should I think I will have the sign agreements back from them next month on transportation and interconnect station um, maintenance work. Uh, and I, I, I can't say Hartman Corn is is good for, good for it, but I feel they are. It's, I, I know it's going to go through. They're, they're in the permitting process. They're out getting easements. Uh, they're working with their design engineers. Uh, I've seen their RFPs, so it's, it's, it's going to be a good project. So would it be in our best interest to have it stated that they'll cover the cost whether it goes through or not? If you can get them to do that. I mean, obviously, the best protection is get your money up front, right? To the extent that you can. I'd feel better if we had some agreement. I can. Uh, I'll talk to Mr. Anderson tomorrow, and they'll get us. I guarantee they'll provide us something right away. He's and what's stated the, that they will. And what's the expected timeline for the reimbursement? Uh, the reimbursement will be as soon as the gas starts flowing or the, the station is constructed. So probably, hopefully, September of next year. So lump sum payment for all of these costs and then... And the then construction and all the materials. Yeah, this is just all design and permitting. This isn't materials and we have to do a hot tap on our pipeline. We have to run some pipe across the road. Uh, we have to buy measurement skids, filter skids, uh, electronics. Uh, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot more prices are... So as a, a project of this magnitude, I mean, is a letter stating that they'll reimburse us enough? Or should it be more of a formal agreement? Well, Ideally, you'd have an agreement so everyone knows what's expected of them and what their responsibilities are. We originally talked about having that as part of the interconnect, those agreements that are going to be right. coming for I'd asked John, he thought some of this work won't start till the end of the year, but when we would have those contracts signed in place before the, this really starts. The inter, as Jeremy said, I'm sorry, Jeremy. The yeah. interconnect agreement basically spells out that they will pay for all costs incurred. So at that point, we'll have something more formal. All right. You guys good with that? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any guys have a question? Do you care to make a motion to approve that? Yeah. Uh, Don, do you want to, where are you going? Do you want to approve it subject to being covered from a legal perspective? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I'll approve requisition uh, 9358 of design for HCP interconnect. Uh, any necessary legal work to title? No, second that. Motion by Anthony, second by Don. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item 8D is approved then. Thank you. Um, item 8E is the discussion for approval of rescheduling the November 30th, 22 and December 28th, 22 regular commission meetings if needed. So I see, I assume Angie will yeah. see two people <coughs> missing today. <laughs> and I can 
put an email or a text out to all of you guys. Sure. But um, our next November meeting is November 30th. Normally in the past, November 23rd, right before Thanksgiving has always been fine. If you guys are fine with that, we can keep it. I will also email Bob or text Bob and Kathy as well. Um, so just something to keep in mind. I am out of town on the 30th, okay. but I am available on the 23rd. Okay, good yeah, to meet you. Okay. I'm good either way. I'm fine with both of those. Perfect. Okay. Unlikely not available December 28th, though. All right. And that typically we have always rescheduled to before Christmas. So if we're looking at the 16th of December. Or nope, sorry, take 21st. that back. Yep. 21st of December. That works for me. Good, I'm good with that. Okay. Perfect. I will just confirm with the other two. So we're talking the 23rd of November? Is it? Because you said Anthony, you're out to sort of Yeah. So I'll confirm with the other two as well just to see what their schedules are before it is finalized. And then if we are going to make that change, we'll have to approve. I'll have to have Matt approve a special meeting for the regular scheduled meeting that's November 30th. Just moving yeah. up the regular scheduled meeting. Right, yes. And I have a plus three days before. The other place that we've done in the past, and we talked about that last <coughs> month too, is a special meeting. Typically, you guys wanted a special meeting outside of the normal board meeting to go through the budget, the plenary budget stuff. You guys still want to do it that way? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm, th I'm thinking we'd be looking at like the week of the 14th. Or we could do it the week of the 21st to, just depends on how many times you want to come here in a month, three. And the 14th should be, okay. Great. Right. The week of the 14th works for you? We both do. Okay. I'll send out an email to get your guys' availability. It's usually not too long of a meeting night. Oh, yeah, it's usually not an hour. Hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might maybe even be in favor of coming before the meeting. You know, if it's the same day, I don't know if that's possible or not. We could, yep. It's however you guys want to do it. We certainly can <coughs> do it out before the meeting, too. That's pretty good. It's really it's up to you guys' schedule. It works for you. Either one should be fine. We could the 14th, or so far the 23rd looks good, too. Okay. All right. And we'll follow up with the other two. Yep. Okay. Kind of from there. And we're still waiting on few things, so some budget numbers yet. We're still waiting on insurance and budget numbers yet. So there's a few things within the next week or two. <coughs> I think you need to get short up in the next week for sure. So that I have time to put together the plumber stuff, to take a look and get stuff to the cost of service consultants and get things prepared for you guys so you can take a look at that stuff prior to a special meeting and we're talking for about three weeks out. So so it's all coming it's coming in fast and we're still waiting on the information. So. To go. <coughs> Sounds great. Best item on our agenda is to adjourn. So moved. Okay. by Don, second by Anthony. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Drive!